Hi, and welcome to module 6 of video lecture 4. In the previous module, we covered the exponential function. Now we're going to cover the inverse of that function, the logarithm function. Now, they're closely related, and it turns out you don't really have to memorize the logarithm function derivative at all. You can get it directly and quickly, as we'll see from the exponential function. But oftentimes, it's easier just to remember it. It comes up a lot um, in, in political science examples, so it's better just to remember it. And again, it's pretty simple. So let's get it. Now, if you recall from the previous module, the derivative of the exponential was the exponential itself. Also, you may recall that e to the natural log of x equals x because of inverse functions. Turns out this is all you need to get the derivative of the logarithm. Let's start off by differentiating both sides of this. Well, the right-hand side is 1, so we get that the derivative of e to the natural log of x equals 1. Well, this is yet another opportunity to do the chain rule. Let's make u equal to the natural log of x. Then g prime of u is equal to e to the u. And f prime of x is equal to the thing we want here, which is the derivative of the natural log of x, dx. And g prime of f of x is equal to e the natural log of x, which is x again. So what do we get? Well, we get that multiplied together, we get that x times the derivative of the natural log of x dx equals 1. Well, as long as x is not 0, in which case the natural log isn't defined anyway, we can divide by x, which gives us the answer that the natural log derivative of the natural log of x dx equals 1 over x. That's it. So it's not quite as simple as the exponential, but the derivative of the natural log is equal to 1 over x. That's it. As before, we can do the same thing for a more general log than the natural log, even though the natural log occurs much more often than the other ones. So let's do that just to be complete. Just like um, the derivative of the natural log, um, just, just like e to the natural log of x equals x, a to the log base a of x equals x. So just like the log is, the natural log is, is the inverse function of the exponential, the log base a is the inverse function of a to the x. The same trick works. So again, we have here, g of u, sorry, I skipped a step, u equals log base a, g prime of u is just a to the u, but times natural log of a, which came from before. Remember, that was what we figured out in the previous module. f prime of x is that thing we want. So we're going to leave it like this. The right is 1 again. So we get that, plugging this in, we get that the, um, let's see. Yeah. We get that a to the log base a of x times natural log of a times d log of a dx equals 1. This thing over here is x. So that's not over x, that should be x. This thing <laughs> equals x. So we get that x natural log of a times this derivative equals 1. Or as long as x is not 0, d log of a over dx equals 1 over x times natural log of a. That's it. This is the most general example of that. And again, if a is e, that goes away and it's just 1 over x. That's it. That's the entirety of the natural logarithm derivative. Um, we derived it. We have the answer. 
how do we use it? And the same as the way we did before with the exponential. So we'll do an example or two to get a handle on how this works. Um, the first example, we can be very general because it actually yields an important thing that blogs are used for in the social sciences. And that's as a relative rate of change. So if we have something that looks like this, log of f of x, right? And that's a natural log. I'm just writing log because I'm used to writing log for everything. Um, log f of f of x, what's that derivative? Well, we can do it using the chain rule again. So u equals f of x here. Just leave it in that general form. g prime of u is 1 over u f prime of x is unknown so we're going to leave it as x prime of f sorry f prime of x and g prime of f of x is going to equal 1 over f of x and multiply them together gives us f prime of x divided by f of x. And we see that that gives us a relative rate of change. On the top in the numerator is the derivative, the rate of change, and then bottom in the denominator is the value of the function at that point. So it gives us the relative rate of the rate of change relative to the value at that point, or the relative rate of change. This kind of thing comes comes up pretty often when you look at things like elasticities, particularly in economics. So logs are used pretty often in, the, in these cases. And this gives you one example. And the fact is most examples that we're gonna see are some variant of this example, where f of x is replaced by something. So for instance, we can do a simple one. Um, what if f of x equals five x to the seventh minus three x? Right, just random numbers I picked up there. Well, all this works just fine except f prime we have to figure out now and that's going to be 35 x to the sixth minus 3 how do we get that using the power rule and the fact that the derivative is linear so we pull down the 7 up here right we take the 5 away the derivative of x to the seventh is 7 x to the sixth 7 times 5 is 35 7 minus 1 is 6, so that's where this comes from. That's the first term. The derivative of 3x is 3 times the derivative of x. The derivative of x is 1, so that's just 3. And that's it. Now I go down here at the bottom, and we get the derivative of f prime is 35x to the 6th minus 3. f itself is 5x to the 7th minus 3x. And that's the derivative of the log of this thing up here. And we can do it for anything we wanted to do it for. Um, again, the exponential is simpler in that it, it, it gives you back what, it had, what you had before, but the log is also pretty convenient in another way, and then it lets you divide through by the function itself, and the outcome is pretty simple. We often see logs used in political science actually for this reason, particularly in game theory, because, as we'll see in um, a later video lecture, we're trying to maximize things, we're going to be taking derivatives of them. Right? We talked about this a little bit in the previous lecture when we introduced derivatives in the first place. Well, some things have easier derivatives than others. These two functions, f of x equals the square root of x and f of x equals log of x, have very similar properties um, substantively. They both represent increasing functions so non sageable preferences in terms of game theory, um, decision theory, and they're both concave, which we'll learn more about in a later um, video lecture. But that means, in essence, the shape looks like this, as we've um, seen before. The um, rate of increase is itself decreasing. So they're increasing slower and slower and slower over time. So in some senses, they're kind of interchangeable in how you represent individual preferences, except for the derivatives. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That is messy, <laughs> right? There's a square root of x in there. This derivative is 1 over x. That is neat. There is no square root of x in there. 
So you can sort of guess which function is used more often. That one. We see a logarithm much more often representing preferences that are concave than the, any other concave function because the derivative is nice and neat. For somewhat similar reasons, we, often, we also see um, logs a lot of times in other contexts as well. The logarithm also has the benefit of making things smaller. Right? A very large number, like 10 to the sixth, the um, log base 10 of that is just six. So <laughs> it takes large numbers and makes them smaller, which is also helpful if you believe that each individual unit of change um, isn't equally important when trying to explain some kind of dependent variable. Um, so we see logs a lot in political sciences, is what I'm trying to say here. And having the fact that the derivative is nice and simple is helpful in a bunch of different contexts. Okay. And that's it for the logarithm. For the next module, we'll do the very last rule in the derivatives that we're going to cover here, which is the product rule. Once we do that, we'll finish up this lecture by giving some general examples and seeing how to put them all together. Thank you very much.